I'm Kathleen Henderson from Roots and Boots and I wanted to share an update with you about my dental and now orthodontic journey. So some of you may have seen my previous video a year or so ago. This is the update. I'm going to start by giving you the super condensed version, the play-by-play -play of the events that have happened with my dental and orthodontic journey. And if you want to dive more in depth and hear more details about all of these dental events, then you can keep listening. I'll go into more detail later in the video. So the nutshell version is that when I was 20, I had a root canal in this front tooth. The tooth next to it was slowly darkening over the years. I'll go into more detail about that again in the later part of the video. But I decided to have that darkening tooth. Didn't require a root canal, but it had darkened it considerably. I decided to have it crowned. In the process of that, I decided to have the root canal tooth pulled. And so I ended up with, these are two temporary crowns on my top front teeth. And behind this tooth, there is no tooth. I had that tooth pulled. Eventually, I will have permanent crowns on those two front teeth. But in the process of doing all of that, I decided to have orthodontic procedures to correct the alignment of my teeth and the placement of my tongue and correct my airways, improve my breathing. And where I'm at in that process is that I have begun the orthodontic part. I am wearing a guard behind my lower teeth. You can probably tell if you're used to what my voice sounds like normally. It took some getting used to and my voice still sounds a little bit altered because there is a large object between my teeth and where my tongue is used to operating in my mouth. That's the first step of my orthodontic journey. I will then transition to Invisalign. And I don't even remember because my entire family is walking through this same journey of correcting, addressing our airways, realigning the teeth and widening the palates so that there is enough room for our tongues, which affects the airways. And we're each receiving a different combination of oral appliances. My nine-year-old has what's called an ALF in the top of his mouth. It's expanding his upper palate, upper jaw. And then he has, I forget even what it's called, but he has a different kind of appliance in his lower jaw. It's similar to mine, except that mine is fixed. It's all one piece. And I go in for periodic adjustments. My integrative dentist, actually shaves it down. He checks my bite when I go in approximately every three weeks and he adjusts my guard accordingly. Whereas my nine-year-old has a little key that is inserted and we turn it twice a week, theoretically. That's the first step of his journey. My other sons are using Invisalign and they will have other parts of their journey. And my husband is going to be embarking on this journey also. So we all have a different combination of appliances, all with the same goal of addressing and aligning our teeth, widening the palates and correcting airway issues. Now here's the story in case you missed my first dental story video. I'll try not to go into too much detail, but I know I get questions about this all of the time and that's why I'm recording this video for you is to share more details because I know many of you have faced similar situations and I just wanted to share with you what I have learned and what I have experienced. When I was 20, I had a root canal in this front tooth, as I mentioned. To the best of my knowledge, my best guess is that when I was in college, I was hit in the face with an icy snowball. That's the only kind of head trauma that I could think of. I wasn't in any wrecks. I didn't run into anything, but for some reason, my two upper front teeth, the one that had the root canal, it actually developed pain and a regular dentist told me I needed a root canal and so I just went along with it. And then the tooth next to it, while I never experienced pain, it slowly darkened over the course of years. I'm now 45 and it was about a year and a half ago that I finally decided to do something about that darkening tooth. It was very noticeable. And as it grew darker and darker, I became more and more self-conscious about it. For a long time, I felt like it was vain to 
take care of it because it was purely cosmetic. I honestly kept waiting, expecting to develop pain in that tooth at some point, which would, in my mind, justify a root canal because that was the way that I thought was best to handle that situation based on what had been recommended for that tooth next to it. So anyway, finally, about a year and a half ago, I decided to just go ahead and without doing a root canal, because it didn't need one, just go ahead and have this tooth capped so that it would no longer be so distracting in the front of my mouth. Well, what happened, it's a little bit like the old lady who swallowed the fly. One thing led to another. I did everything in kind of the opposite order that I should have if I had really mapped it out. When I went to have that tooth capped, I kind of freaked out and backpedaled pedaled a little bit because I thought, you know what, if I have a crown placed on this tooth, they're gonna match it to that crown that's next door on that root canal tooth from 20 some odd years ago because I had been toying for a while with the thought of having the root canal tooth pulled based on what I have learned over the years about the dangers of root canals. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about that and I'm not an expert, but I have hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. I've had an interesting health journey as many of you might know over the years and there is some speculation that some of those issues could be connected to the root canal and there is very strong evidence that root canals can harbor bacteria on a very long-term basis and that bacteria is basically sending infection into the bloodstream and it can cause a lot of systemic issues and things that you might not even necessarily connect with the fact that you had a root canal in the past so that's a very nutshell version of why I had been toying with the thought for so long of having that root canal tooth pulled. And so I finally decided now is the time to do it. If I'm going to have that tooth pulled, now is the time to do it. Otherwise, they're going to match the new crown to the other crown. And then if I ever deal with that tooth, then they're going to have to match that to this crown. And so I decided pull the root canal tooth. Now I have two temporary crowns here. I still have a tooth here that's anchoring it all. There is no real tooth behind this one, but I will get an implant. I think I forgot to mention that in the first little nutshell version introduction to this video. And that is the reason why I have to do all the orthodontics before I get the implant. Because once I get an implant, you know, the implant doesn't move. So it would be silly to get an implant and then try to do orthodontics because we would be moving all the other teeth, but not the implanted tooth. So we're doing all the orthodontics to get everything aligned and rearranged. And once everything is where it needs to be, then I will receive the implant. And that's when I can get the permanent crowns on those two upper front teeth. I hope that makes sense. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about biological dentistry, integrative holistic dentistry, because I get a lot of questions about this too. It was very important to me to find a holistic, integrative, biological dentist because it's very similar to holistic or integrative doctors or medical practitioners in that when we think of just mainstream medical practitioners, at least for me, I think of people who are treating individual systems of the body or certain types of diseases, certain categories and they tend not to look at the entire person. And that is the medical model that I have ditched. For instance, I see a holistic MD who is looking at how everything is working together, including emotional and even spiritual sides of things, because all of these things play into the health of our body. It's not crazy to think that what is happening in one part of your body could affect what's happening in another part of your body or what is happening for you emotionally can impact your physical health. I don't think that's a crazy idea. And that's what I love about holistic medicine, integrative medicine, is that they're looking at all the parts and how it all interacts. And the same is true for holistic dentistry, integrative dentistry, or biological dentistry. Those are all synonyms for that same type of holistic care that is focused on the mouth, and 
the face really. So if you've been thinking of making a switch to more holistic dentistry, or you've wondered how to find a dentist like that, I would encourage you to use those as your search terms, integrative, holistic, biological, and also ask around if you have any crunchy or naturally minded friends, same way that you would try to identify or locate a holistic doctor or a naturopath, you know, ask those same types of friends if they can recommend a biological dentist. For us, we have to travel over an hour on a highway. We live in Northern Virginia and we drive all the way to Baltimore for this dentist. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details, but I started with a different biological dentist who I really liked. In a bizarre twist of events, he wound up embedded in a scandal, came under charges and Part of the bizarreness of this situation is that the victim and the witness in the trial against him is actually a friend of mine and that is just a long story. So he had done beautiful work for me. He is the one who gave me these temporary crowns and I anticipated completing this entire process with him. But then when all of this transpired, I had to look elsewhere. So that has been quite the ordeal for our family and that also caused a significant delay in my plan of treatment. Anyway, we are back on track and my point is that we do travel quite a distance to get to our dentist, but it's worth it to me. One small part of holistic dentistry is that they don't use fluoride and they're much more conservative with the materials that they're using in your mouth. It's a customary practice for biological dentist to help you remove mercury fillings from your mouth. That's a big one on the checklist as you're moving through your goals with a biological dentist. And they're much more educated on how what's happening here is related to what's happening in all the other parts of your body. And another thing that I wanted to mention, the whole concept of breathing and airways, this was a big part of the decisions that I have made for myself and especially for my kids. I want to recommend a book to you. I will link to it in the description below in case you're interested. I read this book. It was all about breathing. It's a nonfiction book, not typically the type of book that I would consider a page turner, but it really was a page turner for me. I found it so fascinating, very well written by a highly regarded journalist. Most of the book is his own personal story of he and another guy decided to conduct this experiment to examine the effects of breathing, basically breathing through your nose or breathing through your mouth. So nasal or oral breathing. And this was very relevant to me because I have two children in particular and a husband who are heavy nasal breathers. And what I read in this book just opened my eyes to the possible connections and the very probable connections between mouth breathing Wait, did I say that right? My two kids and my husband are heavy mouth breathers. I think I might have just misspoke a minute ago, but the dangers and the ill effects associated with breathing through your mouth. We are designed to breathe through our noses, but for a variety of reasons, over the years, our palates, this has a lot to do with the way we eat in our country, but our palates have narrowed and there isn't enough room for the tongue and so the tongue gets pushed back and it partially blocks our airway and it forces us to breathe in a way that we were not designed to breathe and as a result it can impact the rest of our body and the health in the rest of our body so again i'm not going to go into tons of details about that really fascinating book and it kind of came at a time when i was examining some issues that my children were facing and we were trying to make decisions about how to straighten their teeth. I wasn't sure I was sold on traditional braces and I was trying to figure out what is the goal and how do you keep the teeth straight? And anyway, this book really helped me focus in on what our goals are. And while our goals are to straighten the teeth, the bigger goal is actually to create enough space in the mouth for the tongue to live properly and for breathing to take place properly, which then affects the rest of the body. So that is a big part of this orthodontic journey that my whole family is embarking on. I'm really curious to watch the impact that 
these very gradual changes have on my kids, on my husband, on myself. And that is the update that I wanted to share with you. If you have any questions about any components of my dental story, our orthodontic journey, please let me know. And again, I highly recommend the book that I will link in the description for you below.